customer of Barclays that had jumped the gun, kind of jumped the queue, as he called it, uh, and had ponied up uh, almost $500 million, a half a billion dollars, to take possession of about 2,500 November 20th gold contracts. Now, here's the thing. Hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics for this week's physical silver and gold market update with Andy Shackman of Miles Franklin, where I actually do buy and sell my physical gold and silver. Uh, and we do this each week because, again, you hear a lot of my other guests talk about COMEX this, manipulation that, uh, regulators from the CFTC like Bart Chilton confirming uh, banks moving markets, whatnot. And, <laughs> but all that aside, you know, at the end of the day, silver is supposed to represent what's actually happening with the actual physical commodity. So that is why we bring on Andy Sheckman each one reason we bring you on Andy, you're a, like a diversified portfolio of knowledge on the topic of silver. So I welcome you on in here again today, sir. How are you? I'm really good, Chris. Thanks for having me on. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to you and all your listeners. Uh, I, uh, I, you know, through it all, there's still a lot to be thankful for and um, thankful for you and our relationship and the ability to uh, chat with you and your listeners once a week and just wanted to wish you and everyone out there a very happy Thanksgiving. Well, thank you and the same to you and yours and uh, I'll, uh, maybe I'll call you later from the pool, check in on your igloo up there in Minnesota, but you say hello to the family for me and Andy, so we've seen the last couple of weeks, the silver price on the COMEX has been tattooed pretty thoroughly. What is, is that reflective of what's happening in the physical market? That's not as easy for people to see, but are customers and the orders you get, are they buying or selling? Well, I think, you know, it, it's gone down, of course, because there's a COVID vaccine, Chris, and because, uh, the uh, super duo of, of Biden and Janet Yellen are going to raise rates and they're going to uh, solve all our future debt and deficit issues. Everything hey, is, Andy, is good again. Didn't you know that? Since, since you mentioned yeah. the COVID vaccine, I have a quick question on that one. I've heard this yeah. narrative that silver trades lower because a COVID vaccine may or may not exist. Um, is that going to affect what the Fed is? The Fed going to somehow lower its balance sheet because of a COVID vaccine? I guess I don't see the direct connection. Yeah, well, that's the point. There shouldn't be. When I was looking at a table the other day, yesterday, of all of the commodities uh, from copper, platinum, palladium, crude oil, uh, natural gas, heating oil, aluminum, zinc, lead, nickel, copper, tin, wheat. Everything was up except gold and silver. Everything was up except gold and silver. And so I think here again, as Jim Sinclair is famous for saying, mope management of perception economics, this is all about maintaining perception. And the banks are running scared. As we talked about last week, I had told you that I really felt that the beginning of this week, Friday of last week, uh, well, actually, when we spoke, I think it was on Wednesday, I, I told you, I believe Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, and even today, Wednesday, would be very volatile as there were record numbers of open interest on the COMEX with options expiration yesterday and the futures uh, closing today. With the, the rise of the, the subset of the others on COMEX that have been draining the COMEX of, of inventory, pulling it off of uh, the exchange, uh, the the impetus to get these people um, shooken from the tree, if you will, uh, to to shake all the weak hands loose, uh, has has been, uh, I think, their primary motivation. And I haven't looked at the numbers today, but as of yesterday, there was still over 250 million ounces standing for what potentially could be standing for delivery, making this potentially the largest delivery month ever. 
it's all about narrative. It's all about creating a perception of reality. And and here we are today. It looks like gold and silver have stabilized a bit, have uh, have found uh, some sort of support. And uh, again, I, I think that this was exactly what they were trying to do. They were trying to minimize or mitigate the amount of uh, metal that they would have to actually deliver uh, this month, which which uh, still may be the a record in terms of uh, what has been delivered. So I think that's what it was about. Had nothing to do with COVID uh, vaccine uh, and, and nothing to do with any of the other um, mumbo jumbo that we, we hear from the mainstream media. This is all about perception. This is all about shaking people from from uh, the tree and 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 throwing them off the scent of where we should all be. You're pointing people in the right direction. The mainstream and their narrative is trying to shake people from that and make them question their their own belief structure. So, you, so you mean it would be helpful, for example, let's say if the CFTC gave me a temporary sheriff's badge, and actually, you know, I could use a hand because I was thinking about it yesterday. I believe it was last week uh, the price got smashed in front of COMEX options expiration. So on my list of things to do is look at the expiration dates, look at what happens to the price before that. And because that isn't that the kind of thing that at least the, these, these agencies are intending to be policing and monitoring. Yeah, you, you would think so, but you know, there's inside information everywhere and insiders know. Let me give you an idea what I mean by that. Uh, I was reading um, Craig Hemke the other day and he had a very interesting uh, article where he talked about uh, a, a customer of Barclays that had jumped the gun, kind of jumped the queue as he called it, uh, and had ponied up uh, almost $500 million, a half a billion dollars, to take possession of about 2,500 November 20th gold contracts. Now, here's the thing. Uh, today is when I believe the, those, those contracts are tomorrow go off the board. So why jump in front of everyone? Pay the money to get in front of the crowd to take immediate delivery. It's as if the insiders understand what's happening, that the COMAX is running into uh, uh, shaky ground, if you will, thin ice, if you will, for a Minnesota analogy uh, in November. It's still thin ice. Don't go on the lake. Well, when you see someone of that wealth, of, of a half a billion dollars, uh, he did a $350 million, uh, I believe, on November 20th for 1,889 contracts, and just the other day bought 167 more for $150 million, for a total of $500 million to pull it off the exchange before uh, the uh, delivery expiration or before the de uh, expiration of the contract. It's front running the decision based upon some sort of news. And whether that's inside information or not, whether the COMEX really runs into trouble or not, things are very different right now, Chris. I've never seen it where we see this kind of uh, uh, of of a volume of, of contracts that are standing for delivery and a concerted effort by the banks to shake people from the trees the way they're doing right now. And it's it's very predictable too. If you look at it, I knew it would happen last week. And I think, honestly, I believe that we will see gold and silver really take off into the end of the year. We saw that last year. I believe we'll see that again this year. Gold and silver sold off after the election in 2016 and then shot right back up towards the end of the year. The fundamentals have never been stronger. And, um, you know, you throw now the, the blurring of the Fed and the Treasury uh, in, into the foray with Janet Yellen. It all but tells you that they're going to do all they can to continue to prop up the, uh, the markets best they can and to create massive inflation. I think the, uh, that, that if 2021 was a crazy year, I, I, excuse me, 2020 was a crazy year in every respect, I think financially 2021 may actually uh, be crazier based upon, I think, what we see and, and, and who is going to be at the helm of, of the controls. So, 
Yeah, I think it's going to get crazy, Chris. And, and I think if I had to guess, I think the next few weeks will be very kind to those of us who have had strong fingertips, did not get shook from the tree or shaken from the tree, rather. Uh, and, and here again, when we see these types of um, uh, cascading, water falling prices in gold and silver, that is counterintuitive to what should be happening. It's just best to shut off your computer and this weekend anyway, look, uh, look to, to what we're thankful for with our family and our friends and, and uh, God willing, we all have our health and, uh, uh, and, and actually be thankful knowing that we've prepared on every single level. Uh, those of us who have purchased gold and silver, uh, I think we'll, uh, we'll look back at 2020 uh, that we uh, will we'll be thankful that we had uh, prepared. And, uh, and for people like you who are shedding the light on all of this, so people can actually see through the noise, because that is what we are being inundated with on every level, noise. And any type of article that we ever see in the mainstream is attributed to nonsense. None of it is attributed to what is really happening. It's attributed to, to nonsense. So the bottom line is simply this, trust your gut, have strong fingertips, don't get shaken from the tree when the commercial banks try to drive down the price in a counterintuitive fashion. I think the best is yet to come, at least in terms of price, for those of us who have uh, been able to, to, uh, to uh, you know, see through the noise. And um, I think 2021 is going to be an in a very, very interesting year. You know, that's a curse uh, by the Chinese. Uh, may you live in interesting times. And I think these are anything but dull and complacent. And quite frankly, I think COVID aside, it's going to get crazier uh, as, as, uh, as the year next year rolls on and, and here in the end of the year. I expect it to be. Uh, I expect it to be anything but calm in in the metals prices. If I had to guess, we will see gold and silver up considerably over the next three weeks. That's just a guess, but that's using the last several years as uh, as precedent. And of course, what the the big money is doing not only pulling money off the exchange, but also uh, the the banks trying to uh, create a narrative that that keeps people from from crowding this trade out. And uh, I know that we're very far from it. Rick Rule talks about one half of 1% total allocation to metals in, in, uh, in the entire uh, financial matrix. Uh, I think that those numbers will change and I think we will get closer to our 3% mean average of the last 30 years, which would be a five to six fold increase in demand uh, as we move into uh, 2021. And I think those, those numbers are coming. Th that type of demand is coming. And I guess I'd like to just underscore it by simply saying this. It really doesn't matter what happens with a COVID vaccine. It really doesn't matter if it's cured tomorrow. The damage has already been done. The damage was done long before COVID. Uh, last year, 2019, September, with the repo market crisis, the banks and the balance sheets and the economy uh, it's all in tatters, and I think COVID only served to exacerbate that, and uh, I think that the vaccine is just noise, and that's one of the things that I've always been amused about is how people react uh, so uh, vehemently to to news that in in many cases, and in most cases, has already been discounted. So vaccine aside, Chris, I don't think we've seen anything yet. Yeah, and Andy, of course, not to mention another reason to love silver going into the end of the year is that for all of you fund managers out there listening, I mean, a couple hundred million dollars worth of silver to some of your favorite clients that could change their family's wealth for generations is certainly always appreciated. And Andy, they can find out more about that at Arcadia at milesfranklin.com if they have questions on buying or selling silver, right? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, we're going to have some fun giving away silver and, make it, and, and celebrating silver similarly to what we aimed for at Silverfest and I think went pretty well. Although, Andy, I, that's, it's a fun thing to think about, actually. <clears throat> Let's say you had a client who had $500 million, wanted to invest in silver. What would you tell them to get? Well, it's interesting you asked that question. Um, I was speaking. That's what you're going to get me for Christmas. 
Yes, exactly. Ah. Exactly. No, I was speaking with, um, I was speaking with a head trader the other day of a very, very, very large distributor, maybe the largest in the world, certainly the largest in North America. And I asked him a question very similar to that. And uh, this is a guy that used to trade on, on uh, uh, a big bank's a metals desk. He's very well connected. And I said to him, if I needed to, to place a, a, you know, a, a eight figure order, could we do it? And, uh, you know, right now, Chris, in, at, at Miles Franklin, we probably have, I bet you close to a hundred thousand ounces of silver in stock. I, and I'm, I'm dead serious about that. Really close, maybe 70,000 2020 silver Eagles. Uh, we, as I've told you on many, on many podcasts, I have really made a concerted effort to load up, um, on product into the end of the year. And I asked him, you know, if we had an eight figure order, could we do it? And he said, well, uh, not not so much in coins. That in thousand ounce bars, we probably could do it. Uh, the the point of it is this: is that the physical demand in this industry, while very strong and robust, and in the United States stronger than anywhere in the world, uh, it's a very small market. And when you talk about the wealth that is out there, the money that has been created it's a drop in the bucket whereby one person with an inordinate amount of wealth could a clean out every single coin in the industry in 24 hours with you know 50 75 100 million dollars you'll see nothing available for everyone else tomorrow and when we talk about the only place to go being thousand ounce bars uh let's reflect on that for a moment and i keep bringing up andrew mcguire on your show, which I find to be uh, one of, if not the most uh, informing guests that you have, I, I find him brilliant and always find a, a lot of value in what he says. In in a couple of his last uh, shows with you, he's been talking about thousand ounce bars becoming harder and harder to get on a on a wholesale side. Now, this is a guy that's a a forty year career wholesaler in in London. He's got his finger on the pulse as much as anybody. Uh, you listen to other people, uh, we hear that kilo bars out of uh, Switzerland are six months back ordered. So you put it together, you have a very thin supply in in terms of, relatively speaking, in terms of amount of money out there. Uh, and then you look at the, 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 the big bars, what the institutionals would buy. Kilo bars are impossible to get. Now in thousand ounce bars, according to Andrew, are becoming much harder to get as the Chinese are accumulating them for the first time in his career, as he mentioned. And now you have competition with uh, with a major bullion bank. Well, they're not a bullion bank, but Standard Charter going out there and buying up as many thousand ounce bars as they can as well. So actually, they are a bullion bank. So anyways, bottom line is simply this, is that getting supply is, as I've been saying for a long time, I believe will define the marketplace moving forward because there's so much money out there. So much money has been created over the last year that if just a very small portion of it were to move into precious metals, like you said, money managers, a couple hundred million dollars, there's nothing left. And that would extend all the way into, uh, into the thousand ounce bars, which leads me to one more thing that I listened to you last night talk about. On your uh, your on your podcast that you did alone last night, you talked about Hershey's and how Hershey uh, is is in the middle of a short squeeze for cocoa and doing all they can to accumulate it. Now we saw something similar to that with Ford Motor Company and Palladium. I don't know, 15 years. I talked about how I believe that would happen. That. That silver is bracketed on either side between copper being the industrial metal and gold the the monetary metal and silver has strong aspects of both. At some point when the realization comes into focus that A, the physical supply for investment is really very thin and becoming harder to get not only in terms of coins which could be blown out in one one day from very one, from one very wealthy investor uh to the industrial side where a guy who who's made his living buying wholesale bars uh in the uk is telling you that it's now harder to get than ever 
uh, to the point where the kilo bars that are very, very um, sought after in, in Asia are now impossible to get. So put it all together. You have a, a thin and fragile supply chain in investable silver, uh, even though it would seem talking to me that we have good supply that can change overnight. And on the, the, the industrial side, it's becoming harder and harder to get. So at what point do we see the industrials? At what point do we see an Apple or a Samsung or a, a major manufacturer of solar panels or, or of batteries? At what point do they say the hell with it and throw $20 million, $50 million, $100 million at 1,000 ounce silver bars to secure their future supply? At what point does that happen? So I think that's really, really important to think about, Chris, that supply is going to be a factor and a problem moving forward. And so I think that should be something people keep in the back of their mind, but I will tell you that I think it will be the defining characteristic before this is all said and done. When the mainstream gets a whiff and jumps on board in a big way, or a couple of hedge funds gets a whiff and jumps on board in a big way, if the Ohio police and fire who put 5% of $16 billion pension fund decides to make it 35% or Warren Buffett's quarter of 1% allocation to American Barrick, he makes it 25%, overnight everything changes just like that. And, and that's what's so interesting is that not only do you have a voracious uh, uh, you know, appetite growing by the day for investment, but at some point, the industrials will will really kick that into hyperdrive, and then you have both sides fighting for a very limited supply of silver. I think it is uh, one of the most intriguing aspects about silver, and and one of the most bullish factors moving moving into the next year or so. Well, come on now, Andy. Let's be fair. I mean, you you put forth some good points there, but. I have, I, I mean, at least that Janet Yellen. So now the Fed, see, it used to be people were worried about is the president or the politicians going to corrupt the Fed. Now you actually have the Fed inside the Treasury, which is quite theatrical and fascinating in its own way. Um, but I would, I would posit, that's right, I said posit, feel good about that, that Janet Yellen in the Fed would. I mean, is that is what do we had the Greenspan put? I mean, is Janet Yellen going to be <laughs> Secretary of Treasury? Is she going to be the Yellen put on silver and make sure? I mean, what, what do you think about? Well, it's that? interesting you say that. It's interesting you say that. You know, everyone always says, "Don't fight the Fed." There's the Fed put. What we see here makes me think it's now the U.S. government put, and and this is where where it really becomes friendly for gold and silver, Chris, because as we've talked about before, the Fed put uh, is, it's, it's true, but it's, it's neutered right now in the respect that they cannot get inflation because the banks aren't lending. Uh, and, you know, the fractional reserve system that we have enables money creation to, to um, expand dramatically through the lending process. But when the banks aren't lending, the Fed is not getting uh, the the uh, reaction that they're looking for, and so you bring in Janet, who, you know, obviously is still very well connected to the Fed, blurring the lines between the Fed and the Treasury. It's as if now the U.S. government is saying, "Don't worry, uh, you know, we'll be the put," so that the Fed can do what they can to support asset prices and to keep the back end of the uh, the bond market or interest rates low, and the government can come in uh, and acquiesce to the Fed uh, through Janet Yellen's, Janet Yellen's bidding uh, uh, and Jerome Powell's wishes to create inflation. Here comes the Fed coin. Here comes inflation. And I think that that really, to me, is what it signals, is that it signals that we are going to see inflation because now you will have much less resistance between the Treasury and the Fed uh, and I think you'll see, um, if I had to guess, uh, you know, look, we're seeing inflation. Go to the grocery store, and I'll challenge anyone to tell me that they, they have not noticed that it's much more expensive going to the grocery stores. There is inflation. It's just, it's not broad-based 
price inflation. I think that's coming with Janet Yellen signing on. Uh, I think you will see a, a treasury that will acquiesce to the Fed's demands. I think you will see uh, very, very certainly a digital dollar or a digital Fed coin when that happens. Don't know, but I would bet it's under Janet Yellen's tenure. And, and then when we see that type of an environment, a government put rather than a Fed put, uh, all bets are off. And, and that's when you see a run in silver. And when that time happens, talk about inside information and front running, you'll see gold and silver shoot up as much as people could ever imagine. And it'll happen before the news comes out because there's always people in the know. Uh, there, there are friendships uh, and incestuous ones at that now uh, between the Fed and the Treasury that will, I think, um, will will create much, much higher gold and silver prices. And you watch, the people in the know will uh, somehow be magically positioned before that before that happens. And, and that's what really, what I, you know, have always said to people, look, you're better to be uh, six months early than 60 seconds late when something like that happens. You know, people need to remember, uh, when you buy gold and silver, yes, you want it to go higher. Yes, it can be very distressing when it goes lower. But just remember, this is not about making money. This is not about wealth creation. It's about wealth preservation. It's about saving what you've worked so hard to obtain because everyone else will be herded into the pen. Everyone else will not have the ability to protect themselves once a move like that happens. It's like the Titanic. Once the boat starts to sink, you realize there aren't enough life rafts. What do you do? Better hope you're a darn good swimmer. And, uh, and I think that's exactly what we're going to see here. People will realize and wake up, holy crap, you know, what's happening to the value of the dollar? Why do we see so much massive inflation? Why didn't I see this coming? That's the mainstream. People who have been listening to Arcadia Economics and others over the last several years uh, will send you a very, very uh, uh, warm thank you and one that's well-deserved because, uh, you know, these things are not always evident and visible uh, unless you take a step back and look at what's happening. And, and to see a Janet Yellen now take the helm as, as the Treasury Secretary is very startling to me and I think speaks volumes about what the plans are for uh, – uh, for you know, for things moving forward, and and I think it it all centers around inflation in order to service a ever growing and expanding debt, which will be somewhere in the neighborhood of a five trillion dollar deficit this year. That's just that's just unbelievable. So um, yeah, I I think that I think that um, there will be a government put uh, to go right alongside of the Fed put, uh, as now it seems as though they're both in bed together. Yeah, and Andy, again, to recap, just to make it clear, so in, in the span of everything that's happening on the macro level, on days like this past Monday and Tuesday when we saw silver down uh, in total, I think, was over a dollar at one point, um, did you have anybody actually selling physical metal or were people buying and any, again, just anything you can put in perspective and leave folks with? Yeah, you know. Um in your pursuit of putting out solid information, uh, fairness and disclosure, Chris asked me this question for all you out there before we got on the phone. So I did a little digging and I found that over the last seven trading days, we did 231 transactions. Of the 231 transactions, we did four buybacks, four buybacks that have that totaled $64,000, four buybacks that totaled $64,000. And so the ratio of buying to selling is indicative of what it typically is in that uh, more often than not, people are not selling when the price goes down. In fact, I would argue our business increases dramatically when the price goes down. And here again, it's attributed to information from people like you who explain to people that, look, these price swings not only are predictable, like we talked about last week, but they are artificial. They are paper-derived. Uh, when, when you see 
uh, two weeks ago, Monday, when um, uh, a year and a half worth of, uh, of global mine supply, 1.5 billion ounces of silver, paper silver, digital silver, uh, was dumped on the market at the open. These are things that are done for effect. And people are realizing that because when you contrast it with what Andrew McGuire is saying, that you can't find thousand ounce bars, uh, that you can't find kilo bars. And what I'm saying that less than 1% uh, of everything that we are doing is people selling. Most of the time they're remiss when they have to do it, caveat it by saying, you know, I have to pay for a wedding or I have to pay for this or that. Uh, I think it is, it, it's eye-opening to me and it allows me to sleep a little bit better knowing that what we are seeing is contrived and derived and <clears throat> I will believe till the day I die <clears throat> that the only way that you can successfully manipulate a market over a period of time is to push it in the direction that it is going. Uh, they are holding back a global wave of demand and that global wave of demand only represents a very minute subsection of investors. Uh, and so just wait until it becomes more obvious to the mainstream, <clears throat> excuse me, that they need to accumulate metal and you will see massive demand. So to answer your question, of course, I sometimes get a little too long-winded, Chris, I apologize. The bottom line is simply this, no one's selling, everyone's buying and the lower the price goes, they're looking at it as, as somewhat of a, of a gift to, uh, to buy things on the cheap. <clears throat> and I think that's, uh, that's the way people should look at it uh, until we see until we see interest rates rise above the level of inflation, so that instead of um, buying a 10-year treasury paying six-tenths of a percent in an environment where inflation is gonna run five times that, if not higher, uh, gold and silver are the place to be. And I think people are realizing that in large part to your efforts. Well, I mean, you know, what do you... <laughs> Well, I don't know what else there is to talk about the financial markets. I guess there's stocks without earnings or, you know, that get juiced up by the Fed. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if people think maybe a hedge is like grew up with a, like a silver bar in my crib or something. But to me, it just was that if you trace these steps through, especially once you get the Austrian economics, if you if you trace the steps through, I don't know where else it could leave someone. But anyway, that's why I'm a big silver fan. And again, I don't want anybody to ever feel pressured into doing any anything. I always recommend you do whatever makes most sense to you and feels right. Um, just sharing what I- well, I'll ask you this question. Maybe you know the answer to this, Chris. Has the stock market ever rallied like we've seen here in the face of the gross domestic product way down? I mean, don't they normally trend with one another isn't isn't corporate profits and 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 the gdp of this country supposed to be uh a reflection isn't the economy supposed to be a reflection or the stock market supposed to be a reflection of of things like corporate profits and gdp and and the real economy and i mean what we're seeing right now is so contrived on every single level people need to understand that how can the stock market be trading over 30,000 in this economy. What's, what's locked down and shut down, I just don't understand it and it doesn't make sense. And that is exactly what I mean by you can only manipulate a market over a period of time in the way that it is going. And if this economy continues to stumble the way that it's going, what does that say for the prospects of the stock market? It's being held up by the government and the Fed put. Um, does that change? Maybe. I think so. Over time, it has to, uh, because the government uh, can't really control corporate profits right now that, that I think are in a, in, uh, in a free fall on, on most levels, other than, you know, a handful of companies like Amazon and Microsoft and things like that. But, you know, the GDP in this country is, is declining and the stock market is detached from it. And the same thing is true with silver. The physical demand is accelerating. The industrial demand is accelerating. And a, and a, a price smash like we saw was simply done for effect. Uh, and so in the end, use that 
as a subsidy, use that as a as a way to uh, to do what the big money is doing, not what the big money is saying. And we've been seeing massive accumulation by the central banks and the commercial banks for the last several years. They're using the price as a tool of misdirection, and they're using the narrative uh, created by the the media that's all uh, that's all bought and paid for to do their bidding and to to keep people from seeing the truth. So, yeah, Chris, it's um, interesting times, my friend, no question about it, but I will go on record as saying I am in big, I, I personally, my belief, I have nothing to um, support this other than 30 years of watching these markets. My belief is we'll see the prices rally into the end of the year. Yeah, I mean, perhaps, I don't know. I, I think at, since since we started this call, the Fed has released minutes um, saying that the Fed weighed adjusting bond purchases to pr provide more help to the economy fairly soon, the minutes show. So there's a little... Uh, Got to have that stimulus. Got to have that stimulus. No question about it. I mean, well, unfortunate in its overall inherent nature in a grander scheme of, you know, a good life on planet Earth. Uh, another reason to be thankful for if you're owning silver. And Andy, as we will be detailing throughout the month of December, um, all, what, what a great gift silver makes, again, for you fund managers, getting ahead of the crowd, stepping out first off the ledge, before the price of silver rises and everybody piles in and you get to be a hero like John Paulson or Michael Burry or some of these guys who got it last time, um, makes a great gift retail too. And what do you have a special that we can all be thankful for this season? I do. I have something that's really hard to come by and, and very special. I have some, uh, I bought several thousand uh, 2018 one and a half ounce uh, mega maple leaf and uh, it's the, the super leaf coin I believe it's called the one and a half ounce Canadian super leaf they're really 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 cool coins uh, you'll find that anyone uh, who retails coins is probably sold out of these and uh, I bought a bunch for myself I will sell them to your listeners of what I believe to be the finest price in the country at two dollars and 89 cents per ounce over spot silver that would be cheaper than just about anything in a one ounce variety these are a limited edition coin from the royal canadian mint it is a one and a half ounce the half that extra half ounce you really feel it um, it would make a very cool gift and uh, as a way to say thank you uh, to your listeners i'd like to also um, uh, provide five of those right now to you to give away any way you see fit to your listeners and uh, just let me know their addresses and we'll get them sent out right away. Well, that sure is kind of you, sir. And uh, I would say in the spirit of sharing the information and getting those silver ounces you're kindly do donating out into the world, folks, if you take the link to this interview, you can even just hit that share button, open up that Twitter tab, tag Arcadia Economic without the S and Miles Franklin and we'll pick five winners to receive those ounces. And uh, Andy, it's nice. We, we it took us a while, but we finally got, I think, all of the Silverfest giveaway ounces out. And I know people are starting to receive them and enjoy them. And it's just nice having silver. Uh, it's really nice following the story, which I find quite intriguing. And I'm happy to broadcast and fun checking in with you every week and thank you for being here well thank you for having me chris and again uh happy thanksgiving and um i uh, will look forward as always to uh, picking up with you next week as we head into the end of the year and, and what ought to be a very interesting and, and crazy month of december so uh you take care of yourself thanks again i'll look forward to speaking with you soon bud well, we'll check back in next week. Although, folks, you don't even have to wait next week to find out a preview of what's going to happen in this upcoming December Comex deliveries, because that is coming your way now.